The Russian airborne forces were heavily involved in Ukraine and have suffered heavy losses. In this video, I explain the Russian Airborne Forces or VDV. The VDV is an independent branch of the Armed Forces of Russian Federation and probably the largest airborne forces in the world, comprising about 45,000 personnel. About 30% of the airborne forces are conscripts. In comparison, half the ground forces are conscripts. These airborne soldiers can be easily recognized by their sky blue beret and blue stripe undershirt. There are two types of infantry in the VDV. The air assault infantry specializes in air assault via helicopters like the Mi-8. While airborne infantry specializes in parachute operations. The VDV comprises two air assault divisions. 2 Airborne Divisions, 3 Air Assault Brigades, and 1 Special Forces Brigade. Under each Air Assault Division are 2 Air Assault Regiments and their support elements. The Airborne Divisions share the same structure as the Air Assault Divisions. Each Air Assault Brigade comprises 2 Air Assault and 1 Airborne Battalions. Needless to say, they are supported by respective support elements with some minor differences from the divisions. The Russian airborne forces are mechanized, equipped with lightly armored vehicles such as BMD, BTR, or BMP. The majority of the forces are equipped with the older BMD-2. The artillery element is equipped with artillery pieces like the 2S9 Nona or D30 Howitzer. The air defense element uses either the Shrela or the Verba. Russian airborne forces are also supported by UAVs and EW systems. The 45th Special Forces Brigade is responsible for special operations and special reconnaissance. Each Russian military transport aircraft can carry up to three armored vehicles, leaving no room for paratroopers. Moreover, due to the lack of air lift assets, an airborne division would require two and a half lifts to transport the entire division. Many of these Soviet-era armored vehicles are also outdated and not as advanced as their Western counterparts. They neither have GPS guidance, digital display, advanced targeting system, nor stabilization. Airborne operations would only be feasible after the establishment of air superiority. Or else, things like this would happen. Two Russian IL-76 were shot down by Ukrainian air defenses south of Kiev. If those aircraft were carrying paratroopers, which they likely were, Russia would have lost more than 200 paratroopers. A Russian VDV colonel was also killed in Ukraine. Without air superiority and performing insertions during the day, a large number of Russian aircraft were lost to Ukrainian air defenses. Airborne insertions are generally carried out at night because the enemy is less likely to see you and shoot you before you reach the ground. While these airborne forces can capture strategic locations, they cannot hold ground for prolonged period if they are not supported by heavily armored ground forces. Such was the case for the Battle of Hostomel Airport. This was also seen in Operation Market Garden, whereby Allied paratroopers dropped behind German lines were subsequently overrun by German forces. These airborne infantry, while mechanized, are more suited for combat in open ground. But the VDV often find themselves in urban areas easily ambushed by Ukrainian forces.
there is no doubt that these paratroopers are capable and physically fit. However, a series of bad decision making by the Russian leadership has resulted in their high losses. Радугой мирной порядку пола, Слава десанту, честь и хвала!